Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about how to troubleshoot a fire alarm ground fault. Ground faults on a fire alarm system can be a little bit difficult to troubleshoot being that they can happen in many different places and lots of different things and sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to find especially when they start and go away, start and go away can be quite difficult to find them. Now they can happen on basically any output of a fire alarm system, your non-resettable, resettable power, your SLC loop, your zones, NACs, anything. Now if it happens on a NAC or something that's not protected from overcurrent and it goes into alarm, that could damage your NAC. So if you don't have isolators on, isolator modules and your NAC's not protected, that could damage the panel. Most commonly, ground faults will happen in a box or at some sort of junction, but sometimes they can actually happen er internally in the board of the fire alarm system, and at that point, the panel basically has to get replaced because there's not much you can do about it at that point. But most commonly, like I said, is in a box. It could happen in a conduit. I've seen it before with using the wrong wire and underground conduit with getting moisture in there and making a contact to ground. But then in, in that problem, then it can kind of come out, come and start. Anyways, let's simulate a ground fault and talk about how to troubleshoot. I gotta one. say, this is the way that I go about troubleshooting a ground fault, but there's different ways that you can go about troubleshooting a ground fault. I should also mention another place that ground faults can start is just in a wall, especially if you're using non-metallic fire alarm cable or using Lumex or any other non-metallic cable or even through a conduit, you can sometimes get a nail or a screw driven through that conduit piercing one of your conductors and that can either be on a negative or a positive, doesn't matter, those can both cause well, a I'm gonna issue. choose a pulse station. This is our end of line device. This is our first device, so I'm gonna pick somewhere in the middle. Let's do this guy right well, here. I've just created a negative ground fault. I've gone from our negative terminal on this pulse station to our grounded box right there but we're gonna pretend we don't know that and go about troubleshooting it as if we have no idea where it is. So acknowledge the panel, as you can see, trouble in system, ground fault right there. So the first thing I do is start pulling your terminal blocks to see when it goes away. As you can see, pull NAX. We still have a ground fault. And now this will pull multiple ones at a time. Now this terminal block, which I know is the one it's on, but you just go through pretending you don't know really which one it's on. So we got a few troubles. We have pull station open, zone four, zone five is open. Simplex test switch open. Pull station zone one, trouble zone two. So we have a few different troubles at this point. One thing we don't have is a ground fault trouble. So we know it's on here. So now we're gonna test each zone individually. Now, depending on your terminal blocks, you might be able to pull each one individually, or you might be just uh, unscrewing terminals to see. But either way, now you're gonna wanna get out a meter and figure out if it's a positive or a negative ground fault. So I've got my meter here and we're gonna set it to continuity and resistance. So I can stick one lead in here. So is what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our black on any ground connection. Really doesn't matter. Uh, where's one that you guys can see? Right here is a ground connection. If I touch something else grounded like uh, back here, we get continuity. If I push it in that it goes into the paint. So now we're gonna test each zone. And I know this is zone one, so I'm gonna go from the other way. So we have OL, 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 which stands for, I believe, open line or overload, meaning there's infinite resistance. There we go, so we found our ground fault. So um, if I go to the positive, we have 4.76. So basically just from that, we know that it's after the end of line resistor, that basically the positive travels through, goes through your last device through the end of line resistor, and then comes back and then is going to ground at some point after that end of line resistor. 
because we're reading the resistance of our end line resistor. Maybe that's any better if I put the light on. And then if I go to our negative, we have a lot less resistance because we're right there. There, as you can see, 4.7 K ohm or 1,000 ohms. And right here, we almost have continuity. It's trying to decide if there's just 116 ohms of resistance. So we know it's on our negative. So what I do now is now that you've determined what zone or output of the panel it's on, I'd start looking at your field devices. So now this is your first device. Now it doesn't matter how many we have, but you can take apart that device and then meter, meter the outgoing side of it or the incoming side of it to see whereabouts that ground fault is. But now if there's lots of devices, you may want to go to every other device or every third device, but just let's open this guy up so I can demonstrate what you So do. at my first device here, I'm making a ground connection there. As you can see, if I touch it to something else grounded, I have, I do have continuity. So we are grounded. We metered at the panel for continuity on the positive. We got 4.7K. And as you can see from the outgoing on here, we still have around 4.7K. So we know it's somewhere going through the resistor, still going out from this point. And if we go on to our black, we can see we're still getting pretty low resistance. So we know it's on the negative somewhere past this now, device. Assuming you kept doing this at every device or did every other device and you kept seeing the same resistance on your red and the same very low resistance on your black. Now, let's say you get to one device, which I've taken out my ground fault that you get open line on the red and open line on the negative. But however, you go between the two. If I can get your meter in there like this. Sorry, that I had it for a second and now it went away. But then if you get your meter between the two and you get your 4.7K ohms, then you know you've gone beyond the ground fault since you've disconnected the ground fault from the line side of it and now you're on the load side or the, you're towards your end of line and you see that, but you don't have any continuity from either one to ground, then you know you've gone past your device and you could go back one, assuming you went to every other device. Now you've gone back one device and it might be apparent that your ground fault is at this device, that you can visually see that something is making contact to ground. But the situation could also be that inside a conduit, assuming this was in a conduit, that that is our end of line device, but there could be 20 more in between this device that has the fault on it and your end of line. We don't need to think about that. It could be in the pipe, in between this pipe and your next device. So let's say you go to your next device and you meter both sides, but we already know what's on a negative and you meter your line side or your incoming side and you get continuity in between it and ground. And on the outgoing of this one, you've got it in between it and ground. You know you've got it somewhere in your wiring between these devices, but nine times out of 10, it's on your device or sometimes your last device. You could have your resistor making contact to ground if it's not insulated, but we've already gone one device past this one and we know that you don't have a ground fault at that point. So at that point, you've pretty much narrowed it down to the device or in between which device is that your ground fault is located. So then if you were able to find that ground fault and remove it from your box, you'll want to reinstall your boxes. Oh yeah, and I should have mentioned that in between each device, once you've checked the device, you will reinstall that device how it was and then move on to the next run and then disconnect that device and meter the outgoing side of it. So you are re splicing your devices as you go. So now that you think you've restored your fault, you can go back to the panel and meter where that fault was, which in our case was the negative, had a short to ground. So now if I put one lead on ground and one on our negative, as you can see, we have open line because obviously it's not making continuity to ground.
you can either then re-put your wires onto your terminals or push in the whole terminal block depending on you on your panel. Uh, terminal block can be a little stiff there. And now all your faults should be gone, which as you can see, we're back to our main display. So we know all our faults are gone. Okay, so I explained that the best I could. Ground faults are a little bit tricky to explain. So I hope you guys understood what I'm trying to say. So if you found this video entertaining or useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.